Radio Martí. El mundo de la información para toda Cuba, Cuba, Cuba. las 24 horas del día. Radio Martí. Radio Martí. Los 1180. You guys ready to build a shortwave crystal set? We've covered broadcast band, now it's time to get into the higher frequencies with a crystal set. Believe it or not, these two are essentially identical. This is our low frequency model that we use for the broadcast band with the loose coupling control. And here we have loose coupling control and we've added a feature called a Faraday shield. So we'll go over that in this video. Okay, time for a little uh, crystal radio topology review. You remember our broadcast band crystal radio used a primary and a secondary that was tapped. The taps helped us to uh, match to the diode. This is a very effective uh, radio for the broadcast band. And uh, quite a few people built those and uh, they work quite well. It's a very simple uh, setup. If you've never seen this, you should watch some of the earlier videos on uh, crystal radios and learn about this uh, very effective set. So uh, once we get into the short waves, uh, we have to look at our topologies that we studied then and uh, figure out which one's going to work the best for the higher frequencies. Uh, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of controversy when it comes to uh, crystal radios, and uh, short waves is one of the tougher cases. You are going to need to amplify. And we found that amplification of about 20 gives you a good indication that you'll have good volume in your headset. I cheated, and I've got the gain on the LM386 I hook up to the crystal set up at the uh, 200 level so that we could hear uh, the stations a little more uh, clearly. So as we go through all these topologies, uh, the one that jumped out to me was the one uh, that retained the tap diode and had some uh, variable coupling, uh, the loose coupler idea. And uh, we also want to be able to adjust our antenna tuning. And this is what it looks like. It's, uh, it's pretty simple looking. Uh, we need a good antenna to do any work at all. And of course in the broadcast band that was our 100 to 140 foot inverted L long wire. Now if we were to use that on the shortwave bands, we would pick up broadcast stations probably instead of shortwave stations. So I highly recommend using a tuned dipole at these shortwave frequencies. So uh, uh, the fan dipole is a logical uh, uh, dipole because we have many bands of interest. Uh, for instance, we have the, uh, the 49 meter band in the 6 mag region, the 31 meter band, the 9 mag region, and the 25 meter band, the 11 mag region. So here's a very effective receive antenna. Um, I built one up so we could uh, do this video. And uh, the coax is uh, anything you can get your hands on, but I like to use RG6 TV coax, 75 ohms, and so is our antenna. Look at all of these balance you could use. Uh, these uh, take that unbalanced coax and make it balanced for your dipole. Any or all of those would work just fine. Okay, here we have ye old fan dipole. And uh, the fan dipole, of course, you want to get the wires somewhat angled from each other to get the best performance out of them. One is cut for the 25 meter band, one for the 31 meter band, and one for the 49 meter band. Notice there's a one-to-one -one choke. So it's a high mu toroid, best suited to low frequency work. And I managed to get four turns of the coax through it. Any one-to-one -one balance of your choice is the right answer. It could be five or six uh, number 47 beads spaced at about a foot down the coax. It could be a large coax loop, uh, perhaps 10 turns around eight uh, 8 inches in diameter if you want to make a coax ballon. Not necessary because this is not a transmitting antenna. Or a one-to-one -one ballon um, made uh, by filer style. So it's up to you. That's the fan dipole.
So I've caught a little bit of flack from the crystal radio guys. You know, the guys that really do crystal radios have been working on problems with these sets for many, many years. And of course, I'm always talking about 2000 ohm headsets and nostalgia and, and so on. This is not the state of the art when it comes to crystal sets. Um, more and more people are using impedance matching to maximize the performance of their sets. Well, here's a transformer. This guy transforms 7500 ohms down to 600 ohms. So that's going to work with a lower impedance headset and the 7500 ohms is not going to load the crystal radio as much as a 2000 ohm headset for instance. Now if we really increase the impedance ratio on the transformer to say 50,000 ohms, 100,000 ohms, or even higher, and put that on the output of the circuit, what we find is that uh, we get more audio because those few microamps of current that are going down through the primary of the transformer are producing more voltage. You know, it's just Ohm's law. So, um, you now can find, uh, you know, online, on eBay, other sources, these beautiful transformers. Some of them are auto transformers, some of them are conventional transformers. But they'll take, say, 50 or 100k of impedance, and they will transform it down to 8 ohms, 4 ohms, 600 ohms, 300 ohms, whatever the, the impedance of your headset is. So most of them are multi-match transformers. So if you want to have the highest performance from our shortwave crystal set, start to think about using a decent set of sensitive headphones with a transformer. So we are looking at two loose coupler receivers. One of them is a low frequency coupler that's been optimized for the broadcast band and you can watch that video and learn what loose couplers are all about. But I was asked to uh, produce a video that would describe a similar crystal set, a high performance crystal set, that would operate on the short waves. In the short wave region between 3 and say 20 megahertz. And the, uh, the unit on the left represents essentially the same receiver but one that's optimized for the short waves. Now there's something very interesting uh, that you can see right off and that's this shield that seems to be between the two coils. Why would you want to put a shield between the primary and secondary of a transformer? Well that shield is known as a Faraday shield. Not a Faraday cage. A Faraday cage is very different than a Faraday shield. If that were a Faraday cage, it would be impossible to have any coupling between those coils, either electrostatically, that is capacitively, or uh, through magnetics, electromagnetic coupling through coils, for instance, in a transformer. This Faraday screen allows coupling between the coils, but it reduces the capacitive effect between the coils. Now why would we want to go to all of that bother making this screen between the two coils? Well really it's because of the broadcast band being so strong compared to shortwave stations. If we were to just hook this up to a long wire antenna like a 130 or 140 foot wire as suggested for uh, a regular broadcast band crystal set, we'd have problems because that would overwhelm all the shortwave stations we're trying to pick up. So uh, with our shortwave receiver we're uh, going to be using a coil and uh, as you can see this coil is very much smaller than the ones that we're used to for, uh, for broadcast work. We need to preserve the cue of this coil so we can get good selectivity. Now one side of the coil is going to be grounded but the other side of the coil is going to be attached to the top of the tuning capacitor. And we really would like to preserve the cue of the coil, so we're going to need to use a standoff. You know, I'm normally 
just screwing things into a board with screws and washers and I pay no attention to the losses that you might incur in, in the wood but in this case I'm not going to take any chances and I want to use a standoff on the hot side of the coil. Now uh, of course the best would be a ceramic standoff like this one but uh, any type of plastic or even a phenolic type standoff would be better than just putting it right into the wood. Um, a regular terminal strip would also do a good job for what we're trying to accomplish. And uh, you can use washers and screws um, or if you uh, if you'd like you can order some of the fawn stock clips. Some of these come in brass, some are uh, nickel plated brass. You want to dress up your project a little bit. Splurge and get some fawn stock clips. So I decided just to use an ordinary 365 picofarad variable. You can get these now online quite easily. Uh, just mounted it on the front of the uh, thing. Not too far away from the coil, probably farther than they should have. And I made the little uh, Faraday shield out of uh, aluminum. Just bent it up and cut it. Wrapped it with some heavy duty tape. So here's a variety of different capacitors that represent, you know, a wide range of types that uh, you can use as your bypass capacitor. So referring back to our schematic, uh, build the, the very simple set up, follow these instructions, and you should end up with something like this. Remember, more turns equals lower frequency. More turns on the primary equals more coupling. So the first thing you'll notice is that uh, the turns, why are they so large and so spaced? Well, in a shortwave set, um, you have more capacitive effects between the turns and you have more losses in the coil, so you need to use thicker coil stock and you need to space the turns in order to maximize the Q. And we know that the Q is the basis for uh, getting the high gain and selectivity in a tuned circuit. It's not really gain, but it peaks the, the station because you're getting all of the energy concentrated on one frequency. So in order to get the kind of Q that we were achieving with our lower frequency loose coupler, we're having to use larger coil stock and we're having to space the turns. This particular uh, technique also maximizes the amount of frequency that you cover with your variable capacitor. Now you might say that's going to tune pretty fast with no vernier on the dial, but um, for demonstration purposes um, we can do pretty well with just a simple dial on the front of the cap. If you want to get fancy, certainly a vernier would be the way to go. Now instead of a, uh, a tapped coil like we had on the, on the low frequency loose coupler on the secondary, we don't use a tapped coil, we actually use an alligator clip to clip on the turns. And this is how we match into our crystal diode. And uh, it's the same principle, it's just we have a few turns to work with, so we use a little alligator clip. Similarly, on the antenna side of the transformer, uh, we have an alligator clip that allows us to short out turns to have fewer turns. That's similar to what we had with the slider on our loose coupler for the low frequencies. Finally, the coupling control itself. The coupling control itself is this uh, mechanism. allows you to adjust tight coupling or looser coupling. So let's, uh, let's look at the basic topology. Uh, the input coil, of course, is just a few turns and it's connecting to the antenna post. The antenna terminal connects to the coil that is the closest on this side. The ground is on the other side and we ground and short out turns from the ground side. That's this post. I am using a kind of a star ground. Uh, you can see it here. It's off the variable capacitor. Um, all of the grounding is ending up going to the 
to the uh, variable capacitor's rotor. The rotor is cold, in other words. This is important because as your hand goes back and forth, you want to make sure that the frame of the capacitor and the rotor is the ground portion so you don't mistune the, the receiver. Um, I am doing a little compromise here. As you can see, the, the wires that go from the variable capacitor to the coil are a little bit longer and thinner than would be ideal. Those really should be probably number 14 stranded if you want to do it right and preserve as much Q in the coil as possible. Also, you might want to put the variable capacitor closer to the coil. I've got it pretty far away. That's really not the right way to do it. Um, the bypass capacitor looks fancy, but it's really just an old Aerovox. It's a .006 microfarad. It looked cool, so I used it. Similarly, the hot side is the stator inside. The hot side of the variable is going to the hot side of the coil, which is way back here. So we go from cold to hot, cold to hot. When you are coupling coils, um, we know that if these are the two coils, right, we can go like this, move the coils apart, and that represents loosening the coupling. Now, this is also loosing, loosening the coupling, and this, okay, or this. So there's, there's several different ways to loosen the coupling on the receiver. There's nothing special about that diode. It's a 1N270. Um, you might be able to find a better diode than that. You might be able to find a worse diode than that. Uh, experiment. Try different diodes and see which ones work best at shortwave for you. Jorge Martín, portavoz de los grupos de montaña de la Guardia Civil, ha dado detalles al respecto. En los últimos momentos eh, han encontrado una nueva beta de extremada dureza, tal y como han encontrado en los días posteriores, eh, perdón, en los días anteriores. Now that the radio is basically working, it's, a, it's time to maybe calibrate the dial. And uh, I've got just a piece of white paper, I've got some double-sided tape, we're just going to stick this primitive thing on here. And uh, then we're going to put the dial on, and we're going to really, very simply, use the generator to tell us, you know, what band we're on, what frequency so we're on. Our first frequency we want to go for is 5.8 megahertz. That's the, uh, the 49 meter band. Hopefully that's down towards the bottom. We shall see. It is. So yeah, looks like this thing starts around 5.6, 5.7. So the bottom of the 49 meter band, that's not a bad place to start. I'm talking about. About what Jesus talked about in the story of the wheat and the tares. The truth is... Portivo, mañana... Crude oil was only up 41 cents, uh, 53.54, 53.54. I've been through cancer. I've come in when I've been sick. There's no one to replace me. I don't have a, you know, somebody asked me, what do you do when you're sick? Now, you guys are uh, we're wondering what happens if you have a uh, CW signal. I've got this uh, generator tuned for 40 meters. I've got the tuner basically on 40 meters. So basically, uh, the generator is working like a BFO. So we have the tuner on the 7 megahertz region, the 40 meter handband. I'm using the generator in CW mode as a BFO for the crystal set.
Now this is on the 40 meter dipole, which is the ham, ham antenna. Let's see how this comes in on our little uh, fan dipole. Not as good on the fan dipole because it's not tuned to the band. So it's just showing that the secret really is to have tuned antennas. So you want to pick up signals, you need to have antennas that are tuned. The, the fan dipole is tuned to 31 meters. It's not tuned to 40 meters. So here we are on 20 meters. I am picking up some CW signals on 20. Um, let me see if I can pick up digital. Yeah. So even on 20 meters, the uh, crystal set's got some sensitivity. So this is Radio Spain coming in about 4 o'clock. Some QSB which shows you that the, uh, the atmosphere is changing now as we get closer to sunset. Beginning to hear stations coming in on 49 meters. That was completely quiet about an hour ago. 25 meters was busier earlier. Pretty quiet right now. 30 meters. A little bit of CW. We're just injecting a little bit of uh, local oscillator into the uh, little BFO into the So 49 meters kind of pepping up around 7 o'clock at night. You've been listening to China Plus Radio, a division of China Radio International, connecting you with China and the world. So it's just daybreak here on a Saturday morning and suddenly 31 meters comes alive like a... It's amazing how fast the atmosphere changes. So this signal is overmodulated and distorted. So this is uh, Radio China broadcasting from Cuba with a very distorted, over-modulated signal. So let's look at uh, tight coupling. Which is to say to be in The things we often want is halfway, but as Christians... So we got some strong signals on 31 meters. So let's try changing the coupling a little bit. Uh, 
not because necessarily there's anything wrong with this. So we can play with the selectivity with the coupling control. to try to reduce the interference. It's pretty good selectivity. This set might actually be a little undercoupled. In other words, you might want to have more turns on this side, maybe a little closer spacing. up here on the 25 meter band. Now this signal is so strong on 31 that we're actually hearing it above the band. It's even starting to bleed into 12 megahertz. That's a sign that we've got the diode a little over coupled. So let's try to decouple the coil a little bit by moving the, the uh, diode down. Can we move the diode down? Now we're hearing less of the interference up here on the 25 meter band, which does not seem to be open yet. Starting to hear some 40 meter activity, 41 meters. So here's Radio Marti beaming into Cuba, and uh, again we're using the fan fan dipole. The fan dipole has a 25 meter, 31 meter, and a 49 meter cut. Uh, the height is very low. Um, I would say it's averaging about 15 feet maximum. So if you got this thing up in the air at a proper height, I think you'd do fine with these very strong signals. So men taking Mary is a very common thing. You won't usually find a man called like James Cafferta. So the reality of the situation is that uh, with the state of the sunspot cycle and uh, the weakness of, of signals in general and uh, less short wave activity, there's not a lot on here. <laughs> it's absolutely essential that the, uh, that the antennas be uh, in the clear, up in the air, and they have to be treated seriously because uh, you're not getting as much signal as you do with uh, broadcast stations, that's for sure. This is a much tougher game uh, working with uh, shortwave stations. So I think we've proven that uh, shortwave reception with a crystal set is completely practical. We've had some fun, we've picked up some stations, learned a little bit about uh, techniques uh, at these frequencies. We made some antennas to optimize our shortwave reception. I hope you've enjoyed this video.